Okay. Um, so once you come to members.codingcertification.org and log in, and I know the password is not the most um, easy to memorize, but it's very difficult to change passwords in this system. We don't even know what it is. So um, I would definitely like, you know, write it down somewhere or, or commit it to, to memory to make it easy. Okay, so to, oh, and if you need to um, mute yourself, um, I think just go to the, there, okay, so I muted everybody. If you want to say something just in the panel where it says um, your name, you can just <laughs> Did you mute yourself, Lorraine? Yeah, can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I muted myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to go into the, the course area. So you just click access the content. And the idea is you're only having to come here to, as if you Okay, I lost your voice again, Lorraine. Did I just fade out again? Yeah, you did for a second. You're back. I think it's my headset giving me agita here. All right. Um, okay. So the read me first, you've probably gone in and done that. Um, so take your time. You're out again, Lorraine. I bet you have to change your headset. I, I might. Hang on. Let me let me put this on. Um, mute. I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. That's all right. I can keep you guys entertained while she's changing headsets. Hopefully you can't hear my children in the background. I just actually texted my daughter and asked her. Welcome to GoToMeeting. Online meetings made easy. There are 11 other callers on the call. How many of you have already joined the AAPC? Because you do have to be a member uh, to uh, take the now, you don't have to join the AAPC right away, but you do need to join to the exam. And then, um, now you've probably already gotten your manuals. As a student, you get a discount on the manuals, of course, and as a member, and the AAPC has the best price right now, but I'm sure most of you have those already. Uh, you also want to think ahead for your uh, test date now, you know, for, this is four months, six months in advance, but kind of get an idea and you want to take your exam because wherever you're at, your chapter uh, may not offer an exam that month. So kind of look ahead, uh, project, uh, find out where your local chapter meetings are being held or where the closest one is to you because they're the ones that, that will give your exam and hopefully you won't have to travel very far. Besides, you know, I always tell everybody, make sure you go to your local chapter meetings because those are your peers. They're going to be able to answer questions for you as well as uh, keep you connected you know, and networking as well. It's very important. But if you will uh, find out where that is, uh, the other thing is you have to order that exam four to six weeks in advance. So again, I don't want you to be caught off guard finish the course and say, oh my, you know, when I want to take my exam. So think about that and uh, uh, just kind of make yourself a little little star, I guess, on your calendar and say, I want to take my exam in uh, June, you know, and um, find out where, they're, where the tests are being given at. Are you back, Laureen? Not yet. Okay, not a problem. Okay, as Lauren was telling you, when you go through, okay. and you, I'm are back. you back? <laughs> oh, good, good. I had to unmute myself again. Okay, so I'm sorry, what did I miss? I was just telling them uh, to make sure that if they haven't joined the APC to go ahead and plan to do that at some point because they'll have to do that before they can take their exam mm -hmm. and, um, and find out where their local chapter is so that they can plan the month that they want to take their exam. You don't want to get to the end of the course and have this big surprise right. and, and say, oh, I want to, I want to test. 
So, so I'll finish that up because um, I had that on the agenda to cover too. So in order to see what exams are coming up in your area, you go to aapc.com and you hover over certification and then um, come down here to locate exam site. And then just pick your, your state. I'll put a... Uh, you can do mine Jersey. because we're really active. Oh, okay. okay. New Jersey. Doesn't matter. Um, you don't need to know the index number because you're actually trying to find an exam. And once you find an exam, that index number is what you'll need to put on your, your application. Now, something Alicia always points out that's very important is you have a deadline column and an exam date column. You want to focus as you're getting your, your date on the correct column. So the deadline is when you need to get your application in in order to sit for the exam on this date. So if you want to take this March 2nd exam, you need to get your paperwork in by February 9th. Okay? Now I will let you know in it's, it's on, on very early February, a lot of the well all of the chapters have taken on new officers that started January 1st and it takes them a little time to get ramped up. And they haven't even, like my chapter, hasn't even gotten our exam dates in. So if you go in and you see slim pickings, try again in a, in a couple of weeks. And you might see that all of a sudden there's some more choices for you in the local area. Um, so let's just say you, know, you want to pick um, this one here on March 23rd. You know you need to get your paperwork in by March 2nd. And you can click on Details and let you know exactly where it's going to be. Here's the address. And it even goes down to the, the room level, hopefully. And this is what you're after, this index number. This is what, when you put it in your application, it tells the AAPC that this is the one you want. Now, that's if you're going to do it by paper. You can now, um, and we, we recommend that you do it online. Okay? So you come here. If your membership is current, you keep it like that. If you're going to apply for membership at the same time, then go ahead and click um, Add Renew Membership. And pick Student if you're not already a member. Pick your exam. It's probably going to be the CPC. Um, if um, your budget will allow you to do it all at once, you don't need to do it up front. You can do it later. But we do recommend the AAPC practice exams. But you get one of their three for, that comes with your course. So you might not want to do this bundle because I think you get version A from us. I'll have to find exactly from the AAPC. And then, you know, B and, B and C you might want to purchase on your own. Now this access code, um, let me look that up for you. Um, you would enter that here. and Oh, here it is. It's STUD, if you want to write this down, ISO7. And you can always email the help desk at codingcertification.org for it as well. So it's STUD like student or stud, <laughs> ISO7, and that's for our school. And now you can see here it applied the $40 off the exam fee. So now instead of the exam being $300, um, it will be $40 less. Okay? And uh, the, the AAPC does not check to see that you've completed your course before. I know that's a question that just came up. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's kind of an honor system. They they would like to see that you pass the course, but honestly, they don't care. <laughs> right, because anyone could to, can come to the site today and apply for the exam. You do not have to, you know, be a, a graduate of any coding course. Some people, you know, self teach themselves. Normally, they have to take the exam multiple times until they pass, but um, that is not a requirement at this point. Okay. But they do keep track of that statistically because when you sit down to take an exam, you're going to fill out a questionnaire, and they're going to want to know what training have you had, and um, you need to, to mark on that that you've had a course because they do keep track uh, statistically to see what their pass rate is. They don't keep names or anything, but they'll know you marked that you took a course, and therefore you know, you passed. The person marked they never had a course and they didn't pass. Okay. So that's all you need to do to register. And once you register, if you could just uh, send an email to the help desk just to let us know that you registered and what your date is because that helps us um, as your coaches to keep you on, on track. Um, now you'll notice there's two hyperlinks here, um, the online exam agreement and then the apprentice status page. 
So um, I just opened up a new tab. So this is worth you know viewing. Um, you can you can save it if you want or um, print it out. So um, definitely read through that. And then this is all about the apprentice status. If you um, don't have two years of coding experience or one year of coding experience in an 80-hour course like you're taking, then you, when you pass the exam, you will write CPC-A until you get that um, experience under your belt. So when you finish the program by successfully um, getting a 70% on all of your, your tests in the final, you will be given a certificate from us and a letter, and you will submit that to the AAPC and they will waive one of the two years. And then you just need to work on the second year of experience. Now, you might be taking this course and already be involved in coding, and now you're just going after certification. You, you get a letter from your employer that will verify that year, year's worth of experience. Now, my advice for that is don't be wordy. And I recommend that you write the letter for the person that you want to sign it. Number one, it will get done. Um, and you just say, you know what, could you just throw this on your letterhead and sign it for me? I need it for an exam. And just have it say something simply like, um, you know, Mary Smith has uh, been employed by our company since XYZ date and in her day-to-day -day duties is involved with medical coding. That's it. Don't get all elaborate. <laughs> you know, um, and then submit that. You know, that's, that's really all you need to do. And then that person has their contact information, so if they call to verify, then everything's, you know, copacetic. Okay. Any questions on the exam? I took everyone off of you. Is there anyone that has any um, questions so far on how to pick an exam date? They cross a fruit row. Oh, I think we're all not muted now. All right, I'm going to mute it back up. If you want to, um, I'll unmute Alicia, though. Um, if, if you want to uh, ask a question, <laughs> just unmute yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and of course, if there's any follow-up questions, you you know just email you know the help desk, and, and we will we'll get you unstuck. Okay, so we're in the membership area, and we're looking at the the getting started page. Now, with our platform, it's um, built in a system called Nanocast. It doesn't really like you to use your back end. So whenever you see one of these links back to membership page or whatever, use that instead of your back button, and you'll have less problems. Um, resource and reference material. These are just links that Alicia and I um, have just thrown up here over time. If you come across any great links that you think would be worth putting on this page, let us know. Um, so just like this is a favorite, the biology corner. Um, you know, just fun little anatomy things to do. And you can certainly just click on all of these links and then, and then save them to your own system if you want. Uh, syllabus, that's self-explanatory. Instructor support, you can either just email helpdesk.codingcertification.org or you can pop your question in here. If you use this and another student has asked a similar question, it will pop up some recommendations, okay? So um, either way is fine. And we use um, a help desk system called Zendesk, and it's very powerful. And we, we basically have um, help desk personnel that triage the questions that they come in. If it's a tech support question, it goes to tech, to tech support specialist. If it's for one of the coaches, they know immediately when it comes in, we see your, your little record that we have in our system, and it says, oh, this is a, a, an Alicia um, student or a Lorene student, and um, you get put right into our queue. And that's very quick and efficient, and it also allows us to cover for each other. So if Alicia's sick or I am, um, you know, we can we can help cover each other's uh, caseload, so to speak. Um, iTunes access. If you um, use iTunes and you you have um, a phone with that on it, or your iPad, your even um, what's another one, iPod you can actually get all of the lectures on your device. And you can actually listen to them. You don't even have to log in then. So all you would need to log in to do is take your test and do some of the other activities. So we have a lot, I was very surprised, but a lot of iPad users. And I'm, I'm happy to say that the, the videos play very nicely um, on those type of devices. Now what we've done here too is we've given you the answers 
to the um, textbook and workbook. Obviously, we don't want you to cheat because you'll only be cheating yourself. But this will allow you to do your um, exercises and immediately check your work. And what you do is you tap into the, the coach by sending an email to the help desk or using the instructor support link and saying, um, you know, on question seven, I really struggled, and I know the answer is saying this, but I'm just not getting it. That's what you use us for, okay? So what you get right here on the screen is like initial teaching. It's a picture going to class. You get the lecture on the digestive system. You've done your homework, and now it's between class, and you have a question. You call or email your your instructor. You do the same thing here, and it's it's fine. We're we're more than happy to to help you. You know, extra. It doesn't. That's what we want to do. So please reach out to us and, and use us. Okay. And then after that, you've got basically all of the corresponding chapters that match the the uh, textbook one through twenty. Um, bonuses when you enrolled is you get these two on-demand classes for E and M and modifiers. They're not required for your grade. They're just extra for you. Um, so once you get certified, you can come back in here and. Um, watch those videos and take the quiz and get your first CEUs. Once you get certified, you've got to maintain it. Of course, you can listen to these um, you know, for the course as well, but it's, it's not required. So let's go into the first one, the business of medicine. We've got a few items in here. Uh, we try to keep the same little um, icon so they'll be consistent throughout. So normally the green arrow um, is going to be what um, we got as becoming a licensed site of the AAPC, um, their slide presentation. So I'm not taking any credit for it. I'm saying this is the AAPC slide presentation, so I'll show you the first one. And you just click play, just like as if you went to YouTube. That's how ours work as well. Um, you have this button here where you can maximize it, which is kind of neat. And just hit your escape button, and it'll bring it back to the original size. Or um, you can use the, the button down here again. It's like a toggle switch. Okay. Now, on all the videos in our system, when you hit play, you'll see um, the total minutes. This is the 22-minute um, lecture. And you see this little um, slider bar. You, you can um, grab it and drag it to advance it. So if, let's say I left off there. <clears throat> oh, you have to wait for it to buffer. So you see how this line is getting darker and darker? That is the, the minutes of the lecture buffering into your system. Okay, So if you just give it a little bit, then you'll be able to slide this up to the where of the dark ends. So now I'm at the five minute point. So just advance it ahead. And so that way, if you can only get through half a lecture and you need to come back, make a note of the timestamp where you left off. Now if you're going to go get a cup of coffee, you're going to pause it, go get a cup of coffee and come back, it'll keep your place. But because it's on a server that resets, um, if you lose your, you know, if it resets you and you're at the beginning, just grab that slider and go to where you want it to go. Okay. Now you can also download this as an audio file. Um, you can download it as a movie file for your iPad. You can download the slide if you want. Um, all of these, um, if you right click, I'm using a Mac. Yours might have a different language. I think it's Save Target As on the PC. And then, um, so if I save Save Link As, then I can download the slides to my computer. All right. So that's the first one. And then um, this one with the little uh, movie wheel here, with the reel of film. This, these are going to be lectures by me. And it will say video lecture by Lorene. It will give you the topic. And it's the same thing. You click on it, and you'll have a play button. And then you can um, expand it as well. It looks a little bit different. But it does the same thing. You can expand it um, and then click the button again to bring it down to the, the original size. And you can pause it. And this is also buffering. And you can see the line changing down here. So this is a 43-minute lecture. And I'm going to grab the slider and move it down to 8 minutes. And just hit play where you want it to pick up. OK, is that making sense? Oh, I muted you. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. That's right. They can, yeah, okay. they can. They can. They've been writing notes in the chat, so that works. Oh, good. Okay, great. So I'll let you monitor that. Cool. All right. Um, so go back into chapter one. Here's that scan of the first chapter. So 
you can, um, that's the movie, where's the scan? Okay, so download the first scan. If you regular click it and your browser is set up to handle P PDFs, it will attempt to pull and, and present it to you. Or what's recommended is to actually just, again, right click, save the link as, and save it to your hard drive. And then you can go ahead and read it offline. Because it and takes PD. a while for these, because this is the whole first chapter, and that's a lot of material. So it takes a while if you're trying to view it in your, your browser. It doesn't always work so good. And the, the um, Acrobat Reader is free. If you have trouble bringing that up, you may not actually have that downloaded on your computer. So um, you, you need to download that, and it'll open it up with no problem. That's a good point. I, I forget that a lot of people aren't as... Um, nerdy as me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only had one person this last week. She kept saying she couldn't get it to open. It kept, it was blank. And I couldn't figure out what the problem was. And then Donna, oh, she doesn't have Acrobat Reader. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So if you've never viewed a PDF on your, your computer, then um, that's definitely something to get downloaded because all of the, the Medicare site, CMS, they, it uses PDF everywhere. So it's definitely something you'll be using a lot in your career. So here's the, the scan of chapter one, so you can actually start reading. You can print it if you want, or just wait for your book. And um, it's, it's, I taught using AAPC materials way back in the beginning. And they, they had a lot of errors, I'll be honest with you. Um, we've used Carol Buck's Step-by-Step -Step Medical Coding, which is a good textbook, but it's, it's um, had so many people jumping in to help updated every year that it's kind of like too many cooks in the, in the kitchen sort of thing. So I really am proud of how they've come with this, this new um, cleaned up version. It's very straightforward and to the point. Um, but like any textbooks, you might come across um, some typos, some little errors. Don't spend tons of time on something. If, you've, if your gut is telling you this doesn't sound right, email us. And what we will try and do is if we see that there's um, an issue for that chapter, we will, you're, there's going to be a page here that says errata or heads up. And click on that, and it's going to say, because I just found one for um, the CPCH course, you know, that the, the question didn't match what it was asking. And I, I figured out what was wrong, but I don't, it's a printed book, so I, all I can do is give you a heads up and say, okay, before you dive into this, Go to your book, and for this question, change this to that. So um, look for those heads up in the beginning of the chat before you read. Because if you read first, and then you come and you go, oh, darn it, I wish I looked at this first. <laughs> you know, always, always check that first. Okay. And then, um, so the PDF is only going to be for the first chapter. Obviously, we're not going to scan in the whole book. And then we've got... Um, I'll have to change the order of this. I, I like the exam to be at the end. But we've got these little practice exercises, flashcards. If there's anything I can take and make it a learning activity, um, we will do that. We'll make them as flashcards or study tables. So normally it's the same, um, the same thing. So I'll start with a study table. And so it's, you're, the, the way these work is you're like, okay, it's a sharing notice. So that, what's the abbreviation? ABN. You click on show. Yes, I'm right. AMA, American Medical Association, so on and so forth. So that's one way to, to practice. You don't get graded on this. We don't see how well or how you know, poorly you do. It's just for you to, to sound down the information. Um, kind of like if you're playing solitaire, this is a good thing to come do. <laughs> um, then the other one is the flashcards. Same list. So you ju it's just a different um, showing it to you differently. So you think to yourself, what does ABN stand for? Advanced Beneficiary Notice, click to flip, oh, I'm right, so it goes in the correct pile. Um, I actually use this, this same uh, program for my kids. Um, American Medical Association, click to flip, yes, I'm right, so on and so forth. And you can you know, shuffle it, you can restart it, you can flip it to show the answers first. Okay, that's APC, that would be a little too easy for them, but you get the idea. Do, 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 do. Come on. All righty. And then finally is the exam. We have set up our exam so that you have an hour. It is a timed exam, but you can pause it if you need to. 
okay? Um, when you start a new test, it's going to ask you for your email and password. This password is separate from the password to the site. It's whatever you want it to be, so that if you have to come back and finish the test, you need that password. So make sure you remember you know, what you put in. You can make it different for every test. I don't recommend it. Um, and please use the email that you registered uh, with the course with, because that's how we link up all of the correspondence from you. And it's going to say, are you sure? Is everything spelled correctly? Yes. Yeah. And then um, you're going to fill in your name. And then these are just some beginning questions we ask every time. It's, it's your opportunity to let us know you've finished all the other um, activities for that module. Um, you know, how did you like the textbook reading, the workbook, the video lectures? What's one thing we could have done better? And this is our favorite part, other comments. And you can click and drag this to make it bigger. This is going to be seen by your coach. So you could say, you know what, I'm really struggling with X, Y, or Z, or I wish Laureen would have elaborated on this topic, or, you know, spent too long on this one, it was boring, whatever. Just tell us what's going on with you. Even, you know, personal stuff, you know, I know we talked about, you know, my midterm target being this date. Um, I don't think I'm going to hit it because of X, Y, or Z. Can we schedule an appointment? So use this to communicate um, related to where you are at this point, taking an exam to finish out um, the module. And this should be the last thing you're, you're doing to finish this module. And then you just click Start Test. And it will show you the first 10 questions. And then you hit Next, and it will show you the next 10 questions. Most of them are about 20 to 25 questions. And they are given to you randomly. So the test that Andrea is taking today, if Aaron takes the same test, they could be different questions. We have a pool of questions. Um, some of them are smaller. Some of them are larger for each topic. So if you don't get a 70, we will ask you to, to study a little bit more and come back and take the exam again. You can take the exam unlimited times. The goal is to get you to get past the 70. Now, we, we don't want you, you know, taking it, failing, and then coming and then taking the exam, and, you know, because you might get some repeat questions, especially if the pool is small for that particular chapter. So you'll have the answers emailed to you, and then, of course, you'll pass. So the point is, is to try and um, take it to where you're passing without kind of looking at the answers from a, from a previous attempt. Okay? So that's the exam. Any questions on the exam? Raise your hand, and I can unmute you. And you, like she said, don't beat yourself up if you don't do well on one particular chapter. It, uh, I mean, life happens and you, uh, they throw some things in <clears throat> there that are pretty tough. Especially chapter four and five, that seems to be the real tough chapters for right now. So, uh, you know, don't beat yourself up. Just take it again. Now, um, what I like to do when I'm doing an online course is I will print the outline. So if you expand all these folders, if you wanted to, you could print this and then just kind of highlight or check off things as you complete them. And that will kind of, you know, let you know, because there's, there's, for these flashcards, wow, we got a lot in this one. <laughs> um, you know, there's, there's no, the icon doesn't change to say you completed it because you can do it as many times as you can. So if you want to keep track for yourself, you might want to just print this page with everything expanded and just, uh, check it off as you go along. Um, so that's really, that's how you get into the, the membership area. When you take the test, you will get an email with your results, and we will get an email with your results. Um, some of you have already um, been doing that uh, quite feverishly, I might add, and you will get a reply from Alicia and I. Sometimes it will just be, good job, keep on going. But it is linked to your record, so we know where you're at in the course and you know that you're on target. Um, if we see that maybe you're struggling and you're having to take the test, you know, twice each time, then we want to say, you know, let's have a chat. You know, what's going on? How are you studying? Because maybe it's the way you're studying or the way you're attacking the material. Um, we are here to help you. This is not a you're on your own and, you know, talk to us at the end. We are, you know, with you every um, step of the way and we, and we really like to see you progress, okay? So this is the membership area. And then the other thing I wanted to show you is the discussion board. And I'm actually going to be um, putting links directly in the student membership area that brings you to the discussion board. Um, if you have not signed up for this, please do so. It is a separate platform 
than your student membership area. So it is a different, you know, login and everything. So if you want the passwords to match, go ahead and copy your password from the student membership area for this um, or use whatever one you want. So you just click in the upper right hand corner and um, click if you don't have an account, no, create an account now. You pick a username that you want um, or your email address and then click sign up and it'll ask you for your password. Actually, let me just do this, I'll show you. So there's already a Lorene, haha, that's me. So you might put Lorene J like your last initial or numbers or, or whatever. If you don't want people to see your first name, then you can use name. That's fine, okay? Obviously as long as it's clean. <laughs> um, and then once you're logged in, let me go back here. Uh, I'll have to remember my password. Okay, so now I'm logged in and it says my name up here. Okay, and if I need to come in and change anything, um, you can change your personal details, your signature. Um, so, like, I don't want to type my name and title every time, so I just did my signature once and saved it. So, every time I do a post in here, this will automatically put, be put at the end. If you just want to put, you know, um, Susan from New Jersey or, or whatever, that's fine. You can, you can reveal as much or as little as you want here. Um, what else do we have in here? You can change your avatar, which in, in my case is, is my picture. You can use, you know, a picture of a cat or whatever you want. Um, we love your, your actual face. If you have a headshot, um, that's great because we can, we can really feel like we're looking at each other face to face, so to speak. All right, so I'm going to go to forums and see the whole list. On the top, we've got the public forums. You all have access to all of these. But down here, the private forums, you have to request access to the private forums. So once you get signed up on the forum, send an email, helpdeskatcodingcertification.org, say, I have enrolled on the um, discussion board. Can you please set me up for the, the PBC or the MTA student private access? And if you're a um, PBC student, which you are, You'll get access to this, you'll get access to the blitz because that's part of your package, you'll get access to the practice exam because that's part of your package, and you'll get access to the CEU um, webinar and modifiers and E&M because all of that is part of um, your package. So you get access to all of them and you'll see, you know, some are more active than others. So I want to take you into the PBC students. And this is what we love for you to do. Hi, I'm new. You know, I'm from New Jersey, I'm just starting out. And this is where you guys can connect with each other. I'm on chapter two, I'm on chapter three. I'm, I'm loving this chapter, I'm hating this chapter. This is what you would do in a classroom setting. You would talk with each other. And that gives us that group experience even though we are not um, having to go drive uh, to a classroom. Now I'll show you a trick. If you want an email every time someone posts, and there's not that many, so don't, you don't have to worry about, right now there isn't where it's, you know, way too many. Um, <clears throat> actually, I should have stayed where I was. You go into the form that you want to watch, and up here, um, to the middle right, if you will, I'm going to unwatch it first because I've been watching it, so stop watching it. And that's what you would do if you're getting too many emails for it. And you come here and you just click Watch Forum, and you can say only when there's a new thread or any time anyone posts anything, a reply to a thread or a new one. So I normally do everything because I'm a glutton. And then how do you want to be notified? Do you want to be alerted when you next visit the site? Or do you want an email? Most people pick email um, or email and alert. That's what I do. And then you can watch them. And then you don't even have to leave your, your email. Anytime a student or anyone posts in here, like say Alicia found really, she's doing all the time finding these really cool YouTube videos. Hey, try and code this one. It's, they're normally gory, so I'll warn you. <laughs> um, it is true. I try to give you a heads up. You know, like here's one graphic, okay? And you go in, and, and this forum is so great because you can embed YouTube videos, um, you know, and you don't even have to leave the, the, the application. It's very, very nice. So we really encourage you tonight, if possible, go, you know, sign up. Send an email to the help desk to get your private access, and um, you know, post an introduction. Let us know, you know, what your your goals are. Um, 
you know, what you hope to get out of the course? Have you always liked coding? Is it something new? I love learning how people got interested in it, you know, especially like if it's, oh, I had a sick family member and I noticed this, that, or the other thing. And, you know, it's just, it's just interesting how we all have arrived here. <laughs> um, that's the discussion board. And is there anything else, that Alicia, I should go over? Did you? Well, I think to uh, feel free to pass the link around to other people about the discussion forum because we have people on there that are professionals already. Yeah. Um, that are new students or people that are just curious that aren't our student, but they're just curious about coding. So, I mean, even sometimes you'll get we'll get some questions on there that, quite frankly, are. You know, Lori or I would have to go research because we don't know the answer to. But it keeps you on your toes and it mm -hmm. lets you know that other people are looking. And uh, eventually this will be a, a fantastic reference, um, you know, uh, in the future. It already is. I'm seeing some really interesting stuff. Uh, one of the girls is on there. She was not one of our students, but um, she's fairly new to coding. She had a medical experience. But she just started doing some HCC coding like I was doing, so um, ended up getting hired from the same company. So we've been chatting back and forth. But, um, and this is Alicia's favorite part, top poster. She always tries to be <laughs> in the number one position. I'm way behind you, 312 to my 185. Oh, I was really worried about that since I was sick. You know, a couple <laughs> times I was afraid that that somebody would catch up with me. But you know, I'm ahead. And you know, about those videos that I like to post. Um, one of the reasons I specifically pick one, I mean, because I have access to a lot, uh, that particular doctor that did that one actually sends, um, you know, I, I have an alerted whenever he, he does new ones, but there's something specific that he states or that's unique about that um, experience that, that, uh, that, that you will experience. And I try to always make a comment on the YouTube video as well as to come back and say, okay, you know, did you catch when they said this? Or the very first one I saw was a complex laceration and, and you know, people have um, uh, complex repair. You know, so people talk about that. I always have questions about that. So it'll be something I think that you'll use, maybe not in the chapter that you're in, but you know you can go back to it. Um, Lorraine, did you mention you can see who the last person who was that posted in the, as well, when you get into one of those? Like, you can ask to be alerted, but when you look over at the right, so you can see, like, on that second one, the open tib fib, the, the graphic, I was, uh, there's had five people view it, but nobody's to comment. It's the last one. And, no replies, right? Okay. Yeah, and so you can kind of check on there and see, so you're not constantly opening them up. If nobody's posted anything new, you know. Also, you see this little dot here. This this also gives you a heads up that you haven't read it. Like I've read everything that's not dotted, but I didn't read this one about Alicia being on on vacation. So once I click on it and I read it, okay, and I go back to the student forum, you'll see that dot disappear. So it's kind of like an unread dot. That's kind of nice. There's so much to this. It's, it's just a phenomenal tool. We love it. Um, I don't think what else to share with you. On the, okay. on the forum, I don't think there's something, but we did get a question that came up on the DVDs. Mm -hmm. uh, they're getting the online ask sex, and someone had asked about if they want the... Um, the CD version, what do they do to, to the get DVD access? version? Uh, DVD, I'm sorry. Yeah. I say no, CD. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, they can just email the help desk and we'll work with them. Okay. Good. But the, yeah, the online, was that there? That should be when you log into the student area. I don't think it's in my test account, but if you come back to purchases subscriptions, you'll see everything that you're enrolled in. So you should see the blitz. You should see the, um, well, the on-demand classes are built into here. Um, so you should definitely see the blitz. If you're not, let us know. Um, but it should be fairly automatic. A lot of people ask us about how they, I mean, you get a syllabus. But that doesn't tell you exactly how to divide everything up. So I like to tell my students when I first talk to them, what I would do first 
And this really doesn't necessarily work with chapter one. It's a little bit different with chapter one. That's all about reimbursement, that kind of behind the scenes. But when you get into chapter two, what I would suggest is that you first open up your book and your workbook and look at the review questions. Okay, find out what they're going to ask you before you dig in and start reading or doing anything else. You know, what what do they want me to get from this that, you know, because it's going to be uh, eventually overwhelming. You know, it's going to be a lot of information. So if you notice it specifically makes a lot of comments about e-codes and, you know, okay, I know that that's what I'm going to have to pay attention, and, you know, how to find an e-code. And then what I suggest you do is you uh, not necessarily read the chapter, you know, kind of peruse and look at the, the bold and, and stuff like that. Then I always say do Lorene's video first. So let do that next. Do the video, follow along in the book, make any notes in your book that you need to that um, she makes a comment about specifically. You know, and so um, after you do that, then you know you can go back and look at the review questions again, and you can probably do the review questions at that point. And of course, the answers are there to make sure that you did them correctly. Once you feel comfortable having gone through the chapter, read her, um, or done her video, you've done the review questions, uh, you can play around with some of the the extras and everything. Then go try to take the exam. And um, um, the other question that uh, people ask is how many chapters should I do in a week? Right. And not necessarily like chapter one is not going to be hard. You know, it's reimbursement, um, and it's dry. <laughs> it's not the yeah. fun stuff. So you know that can be done pretty quickly, as many of you have already done and noticed. But like I said, when you get into chapter three and four, these are completely new concepts. So that's going to go slow. But after you've gotten through like ICD-9 and you've gotten into the, to the CBT, uh, once you get to chapter seven, things are going to start flowing. Yeah. It's going to go faster. You're going to notice that, that you're getting to apply all that stuff you learned in the previous chapters. So you may be able to knock out two chapters in a week. You know, I could plan one chapter a week, especially if you work and, you know, you don't want to, like, completely disown your children or anything. But, <laughs> you know, those first few chapters are going to be intense, and you're going to, three and four, you're going to think, what have I done to myself? Um, but by the time you get to chapter seven, you're going to start having fun. And, uh, gosh, where did you put the term on this? Um, we, I haven't inserted it yet. Oh, okay. And so, um, you know, but at those those chapters are going to be much better. So don't, you know, you might set your goal as a chapter a week, but then you'll notice that some chapters are going to be a lot easier for you and um, you can kind of project what works best for you. Right. So 20 weeks divided by four, how many months is that? A little over four months, mm -hmm. five months, right? So mm -hmm. you need to decide for yourself how fast you really want to get to the point of taking the exam and kind of work backwards. So if, you, if you're doing one a week, then you're looking at five months. If you're doing a little bit more than one a week, then um, you can get done quicker. So your your midterm is going to be um, after chapter 10, right, because there's 20 chapters, yeah. So mm -hmm. um, we'll put it right here between cardiovascular and the digestive system. So if you decide, well, no, I really want to get done in the four months, so that I have a couple weeks to just review and, and do the blitz videos and do practice exams because you want to leave time for practice exams. Um, so maybe five months to the target date of the exam date, but four months to get through the course. Then you know, okay, I need to be to the midterm you know, two months from now. And look at your calendar and, and backfill in these, these ten chapters. And you can you can tap into us to know which ones are going to be you know longer or not, but for the most part, you know, I think they're fairly of of equal weight. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, E and M that's going to be a long one toward the end there, uh, and I I do like they they put that at the end of the book. A lot of your coding books um, would start with that, and E and M is like a Chinese puzzle. It's very overwhelming to learn that in the beginning of your coding career. 
So, um, like it's very intimidating. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's fun once you get into it. So, so that's I think all we had. So if you could um, email um, helpdeskcodingcertification.org with your target exam date, even if there isn't one available in the state yet, just generally when you would like to be sitting for the exam, so we can um, make a note of that in your record and help you um, achieve that goal. Uh, that that would be great. Um, also, if you need to, um, well, well, we'll normally say, hey, you know, maybe we should schedule a call, and I'll, you've probably um, already seen my schedule link. I think Alicia's setting hers up. Um, anytime that you need to talk by phone, that's the best way to do it, is, is to schedule it. If you use Skype, we are on Skype quite often. Um, you're welcome to reach out to us that way. Um, my Skype ID is Laureen.Yandrew. Um, it's also in all of my emails and the signature line. Um, Skype is free. It's, an, it's basically an instant message program, and it can be an online phone program um, if you choose to use it that way. So we use it for IM, but you know, if we're like going back and back and forth, say, can we talk about this? Then we click the phone, and then we're voice to voice. You know, so it's a, a handy little thing. And we're online all day, pretty much. So <laughs> exactly. It, <I've> had you. <laughs> I've had no. We have days where we don't right, talk, yeah. but um, but. You know, there. I've had. Um, I have one particular student. He does not hardly ever ask any questions, and every once in a while, he'll. You know, I'll see it pop up that he's online on Skype, and and about one in every ten times it pops up, he'll send a question, and I can just answer it real quick. And we, you know, answer for a few seconds, and then it's done. He's not very talkative, <laughs> you know, and and so, um, you know. You get a specific question answered right away. Sometimes right. it's just bugging you. A lot of people can't offer that online. No. And, and mind you, we're not there 24 hours, and we can't always offer that. But if you see our icons on and you bing us and, and we don't respond, you know we're we're not there. But if we do, hey, take advantage of it. You know, we, we're there yeah. to help. Or we'll let you know, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm getting ready to start a meeting. And um, go ahead and send me an email. You know, or, or send the help desk, and mm -hmm. and we'll let you know. You won't offend us at all. So, and don't ever think that you're bugging us. I can't tell you how many emails I get from people stating, "I'm sorry to bug you again." You know, no, you're not bugging you. That's that's what we're here for. Yes, yeah. that's, that's our our claim to fame is the we want you to feel warm and fuzzy. <laughs> um, okay, so anyone have any questions? Rosetta asked, curious how many chapter does that equal to on I, do you know do you well we know? call it an 80 hour course it's equivalent yeah. of an 80 hour clock course but of course you know people read at different paces if we were to set this up and I have set this program up um, actually started a program at Durham University in Philadelphia and it was a 20 week course mm -hmm. that that met and we had five chapters an exam five chapters an exam so on and so forth it took them 20 weeks to get through the the clock hours the AAPC will look at clock hours, and um, some people get clock hours confused with credit hours. You know, in college we did so many clock hours was equivalent to credit hours, so that's how you got two credits, three credits, four credits. So, so don't get that confused. It's it's not you're not getting college credit for this, but you do get credit for clock hours uh, to knock off the apprenticeship time. Great. All right, I'm going to open up the chat. Warning, warning. Okay. Anyone have any questions? You can just shout them out. Was that helpful? Yes. Good. Are you excited? Very excited. When should we, yeah. When should we have our manual um, purchase at one point? Oh, your coding manuals, you should, you should purchase them now. Um, okay. If the, the AAPC has the, the cheapest um, rates, if you hover over store, you'll see uh -huh. here 2013 coding books now shipping. And this package here, $169.95, that okay. is, you cannot touch that price anywhere. And these are the books I use. I, I don't know, Alicia, I don't know if you bought the same set. But, uh, um, yeah. You know, when you see me use my document camera on the videos, these are the books. Oh, good. Yeah, and they, they get them to you pretty quick. 
Okay. Now, now, for the I first should... chapter, you don't need them, so you can go ahead and get started with the first chapter because it's scanned in, and you know, it's right. like Alicia said, it's more about reimbursement issues. It shows you how coding fits into the scheme of things. Um, but by you know, chapter two, you will you'll need to have your ICD manual. Okay. Um, now I've been do I started the uh, uh, med terms and anatomy, mm -hmm. and I start I look at the um, the coding courses and there's a lot of anatomy and in that as well. Well, there's one chapter on anatomy that's chapter two, so it's kind of an overview. Um, okay. If you're doing the medical terminology course as well, um, you could do all of your medical terminology chapters first and then do coding. A lot of people like to do a little bit of both, just like when you went to you know, high school and college, you, you took multiple subjects. Um, sure. Although for myself, as I get older, I'm a little more linear, I like to do one at a time. Um, but if you want to help, have us help you map out how that would work, um, basically what I would do is do the introductory chapters of each book first, and then when I'm doing the coding course and I get to say the integumentary surgery mm -hmm. section, then I would, in my medical terminology book, do the chapter on the skin, on the integumentary okay. system. Nice. So do the anatomy medical terminology first, and then the coding chapter, and so on and so forth. And that right. might make you feel like you're kind of, I'm, I'm getting into coding, instead of yeah. having to get through the whole medical terminology book. And it's because it's a lot. Medical terminology is a lot. Um, and you can jump around in the MTA course. I would, don't jump around in the coding course. No, no. Okay. In the order that that's given. But the, and, and I think probably 80% of the people that I have doing both um, are doing them both at the same time. I have a two, two, maybe three people that are doing them one at a time. So it's strictly up to you. Good. Well, thank you. So how much time should one, one allow for both courses? I, I would add another three months for the medical terminology course. Okay. I mean, if, if some people are doing it as a refresher, then they might be able to get to it quicker. And then, you know, there's some people are like, look, I just want to get an overview. I'm not going to get hung up on getting, like, you know, a 90. I just want to get the general gist of it and get familiar with the terms, and I'm happy with getting a 70 on each chapter and moving along. Um, so it really depends on your mindset. Um, but no, you have a year to access the material, so you can come back and look at it even after you get certified. You know, if you want to go through the, the activities to kind of practice stuff and you know, as you get ready for your ICD-10 proficiency test, um, you'll probably want to come in and review some of that medical terminology and anatomy stuff. Yes, and that's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, two things. One, ICD-10 is going to be very heavily driven with um, anatomy, but on the uh, CPC exam, there's ultimately 20 questions that are going to be on 10 on terminology and 10 on anatomy. They've got them set up like the anatomy, uh, the MTA questions that are in that book. Mm -hmm. But you, um, so that's 20, if you're comfortable with that and you don't have a problem with anatomy and physiology, or you can break those words down, that's 20 free questions. That's, that's 20 that you, you know, should be able to get. I used to tell the um, students at the college because they had to take, you know, medical terminology and anatomy and physiology. And um, I said, this should be fodder for you. This should, this should give you uh, a little bit of leeway on some of those hard questions uh, in the rest of the exam. So, so that, that it is a big part of the exam, so you want to feel comfortable with it. Yeah, and those are the ones that you're supposed to be able to answer quickly um, in, you know, 15, 20 seconds. So you have those, the seconds left over from the average of two minutes per question on the one op report. You know, and, but they're all the same. So the easy peasy questions are worth the same as the hard ones. So um, you'll you'll see in the videos we'll talk about, you know, okay, so if this was a board exam question, you had multiple choice, how would we attack this? How would we think about it? And especially when you get to the to the blitz videos at the end, we go into that a lot. <laughs> so. Well, I'm very happy to have all of you on board. I look forward to seeing you progress and I especially look forward to seeing post on the discussion board, hint, hint, because um, that's really how we can really develop a you know, good relationship with you, just like we would if you were coming to a real class.
Yeah, hi, this is Gloria. Can you hear me? Yes, Gloria, hi. Oh, hi. Uh, I, I, is Alicia on? I'm sorry? Is Alicia there or she's gone? Yes. No, Alicia's talking. Oh, okay, it's Gloria. Okay, I, I, I don't have a computer I at work. I just logged in through the telephone and I was listening to everything that was said. Mm-hmm. Well, I've, and, this uh, is what I mean. I've recorded it, and if, it came, if the recording comes out good, yeah. I'll email everyone the link so you can rewatch it. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, all right, that's fine then, because there are some of the things you're saying that I, I'm just using the phone. I cannot see, I cannot see. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, no, me, visual, visual. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah. right, everyone, I have five okay. minutes past nine. I'm going to let you go. Class dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, maybe we'll do an impromptu call again. And we, we have the monthly uh, webinars. Oh, I did want to um, show you that real quick, too. If you go to um, the site, We've been on the discussion board, but we don't want to forget the blog. Um, we put articles up uh, quite frequently. They're very educational. A lot of them are previous clips from um, the Q&A webinars. But always check on the right-hand side. We've got a lot of freebies here, little you know, uh, modifier grids, E&M tools. Um, but this is what you want to sign up for if you have the time. Third Thursday of every month at 8 p.m., the same time that we met tonight, same interface with the, the go to me. Um, go to webinar actually and um, it's a lot of fun and it's you know you can ask any general questions or just sit back and learn whatever um, you prefer to do so I wanted to encourage you to, to sign up for that as well and if you sign up for it and you don't make it that's okay too uh, but just get signed up so you'll get the email reminders and if you have the time that Thursday night come join us it's a lot of fun great all right, everyone. You have a good night, and uh, we'll be we'll be hearing from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.